All right, down here we have our front bumper. It's just sitting here. Hopefully uh, nobody steps on it. It is uh, still needs a little bit of detail, like paint on the front splitter. Um, that needs to get done. And we have a bunch of pre-cut battery cables right here. Uh, here's my work table. It's a mess. Just all kinds of stuff, diagrams, pumps, things that need to get mounted. It's kind of a disaster right now, actually. Uh, these two batteries are going to be in the engine bay above, like where the engine would sit, kind of high up. This is our front box that has been pretty much a disaster for me. We're going to have to end up really modifying this front box. I'm going to have to probably raise it up. I wanted everything in the car, the batteries, to be as low profile, like low, low centered gravity as possible. Um, it doesn't really seem to be happening. It's hard to get everything right and still have room and space and everything just seems like it needs to sit up higher because these are square batteries in a rounded car, you know. Um, this battery pack right here is actually the worst fitting one. Um, like I said, I don't want to, you know, say that Chris Eimer did a bad job because he definitely didn't. He did a great job. Uh, there was just some miscommunication with trying to get it to fit with all these water hoses, electrical, all these things that we needed space for. And he doesn't have the space in the car. And I understand that. So it's definitely not an easy thing to overcome. So I guess with that being said, uh, where I'm at right now is I'm probably going to, because I have a deadline of two weeks and it's really important that the car is there and that I get it um, taken care of and you know show worthy for turn 14, which is a really, really big supporter of ours. And you know we have to be there with the car. Um, and you know getting help to modify these packs and modify these the mounts for the battery packs um, is is going to be tight because I know that you know like a lot of the fabricators are working on projects and they got stuff that they need to deal with with Formula D and all these other things. Um, what I'm kind of planning on doing right now is just running one pack on the car. Uh, with with that, basically, what's going to end up happening is um, instead of having two 400 volt battery packs, I'm going to have one. Uh, the car will still drive, run. Uh, it'll be probably down on power, but down on you know power from 600 um, is going to be still you know quite quick or quick enough. Um, I probably will just be running the one pack. Um, the range will be cut in half, of course. Uh, but after you know we just get through this event, this display, um, I'll tear the car basically back apart and reconfigure the battery packs. I have some ideas. The T-shaped one that I just showed you on the floor, um, I may end up making those um, tandem, so then one in front of the other, because now we have more space in the engine bay for where the engine used to sit the batteries are going to be mounted a little bit higher so that allows a little bit more space underneath so maybe we can try to run those two packs in tandem but um so far the major obstacles of this car for me is literally just fitting the batteries and fitting the drive unit um, now in hindsight the drive unit fitment seems actually pretty decent it went pretty smooth with uh, Wisecraft, you know, they, they did take a long time to do it, but um, the fitment is, is, is pretty good. Um, only a couple things have to, had to be and have to be addressed with that fitment, but the batteries so far have been um, quite the challenge. It's just difficult to cram these big, heavy, giant batteries, two full Chevy Volt packs into this tiny S2000 and still have trunk space. So, um, yeah, it's definitely been a challenge, but thanks for tuning in and seeing what, you know, issues and, um, uh, stuff that I'm, <laughs> that I've been having to, uh, overcome in the last month or two. So, uh, thanks guys. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. So here's the harnesses that we created for the thermistors for the temperature sensors on the batteries. We have a master and a slave harness for all the thermistors. We also have two of these BMS harnesses. So Every single cell on all of our packs is wired to these orange connectors. 
we had uh, brand new terminals and mostly brand new connectors for all these. So um, our Orion BMS is going to wire into these three white connectors, just staggered down the line. And then we have all these different um, uh, cell taps for all the batteries. And like I said, there's two sets of these harnesses. So one per full um, pack. And then we have the thermistor packs. And then this wiring harness right here is for our rear PDM. So this, this will go into our PDM 30 rear PDM, um, similar style connector. This one's going to be into the Tesla drive unit. Uh, we have some stuff under the car for water pumps, water pump controls and CAN bus. And then we have some interface plugs that'll interface to our main harness. And this is not quite wrapped up yet, but this is a uh, mil spec cannon plug that's going to go into our high voltage box. All right, guys, I want to take a quick second and show you what I'm looking at. It's pretty freaking crazy. Um, it's just all the battery management and thermocouples and water lines and stuff in the back of this car. So let me uh, quickly show you guys what I'm looking at. All right, so this mess of wires and batteries. I uh, got all my um, BMS, all the orange connectors on. These are the um, water lines right here from HPS. These are basically what is distributing water through everything. I just had to kind of get them up here so I can, um, you know, connect them where they need to go and then I can terminate them after. But uh, yeah, all this right here, all this loom running through the center is my rear harness, the BMS harness, thermocouple harness for the master and the slave. So there's like, one, two, three, four, there's like five giant wiring harnesses running through the center right there. They continue down and then around. Um, cut, I had to cut open up some of these things to kind of get some of these wires through. And then everything's gonna be dropping down under the car uh, through the old shifter tunnel area. And then you can see I'm still working on this. I haven't really touched it much, but that all needs to be gone through. PDM needs to be secured. And this is uh, pretty crazy. Over here is a bunch more connectors. So all these are just like my controller, my BMS, you know, for one of them, PDM. PDM harness isn't even in here. That The whole PDM harness is gonna lay right here and then go down through a hole in this area, down under the car. So there's a lot of wiring loom in this car right now. All right, so here's what I'm looking at under the car. Everything is just hanging down through here. All the harnesses, one, two, three, four of them coming down through the shifter tunnel. And then I have another bundle of harnesses here that are gonna go to the back of the car. 